Beautiful. Barry Williams, beautiful. All right, good morning. Thank you for being here. I'm happy to be with you. Um, you know, I, I think it's kind of a rough feeling to feel like life has defeated us, and probably all of us at some point have been there, even if only briefly, uh, to feel like, well, I tried, it didn't work out, I don't want to play anymore, or this is just so difficult, I don't know what else to do. Um, there could be no victory without, I think, the recognition of God. You know, God in me is the power. God in you is the power. In God, everybody wins. So when you feel stuck, and I know we all do at different times, you know, or, or even if you've been there for a long time, know that there is help. It has always, always been there. Uh, there was a man who wanted to join this very, very seemingly exclusive church. And for about five years in a row, he was turned down for membership, if you can imagine such a thing. And he felt pretty defeated about that. And so he started praying about this and said, you know, God, I have been trying to get in the door for five years. What's the story? I just don't understand, God. Just help me here. And, God, and he hears a voice. He, hear, he hears the voice. And the voice says, don't feel bad. I've been trying to get in since they opened the doors. <laughs> so... Um, when, when we pray in the way that we pray in Science of Mind, which is affirmative prayer, we know that before we, prayer, before we pray, the answer is already there. The answer is waiting for us just to be able to open up and receive it. Right? So um, God, the universe, has already said yes. Right? In God, everybody wins, and we have to do our part too, though. So it's not like God does God's part and we do nothing. It's like, we do our part, and God can do God's part. So I love it when people say, this happens to me, oh, every so often. We don't have to go into the details. But um, you know what you should do at church? <laughs> and, uh, and I say, well, thank you, thank you. And they say, no, 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 really, you know what you should do at church? And I say, well, why don't you give me a proposal about that? Hmm? And they're like, what, me? No, no, no. I, I just, I'm just here to give you the idea. And it's like, no, 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 dear. We have plenty of ideas. You know, what we need is people who are willing to see them through into fulfillment. It may be that God gave you the idea because you were supposed to do something about it. You know? you know, how often do we look at the world and say, God, you know what they should do? You know what should be done here? You know? And, those, and it, kind of, it occurs to me that the things that come to us again and again, and for all of us, there are probably a few things at least that are always pulling at our attention, then at the very least, that, that particular situation should get some of our regular attention. We should pray about it every day. We should send love and light in that direction. We should be praising and raising that situation. And it may also be that we are being called, if it keeps coming into our awareness, if it gets our attention again and again, we may be being called to roll up our sleeves and actually do something about it, whatever that may be. You know, it's a, you know people say, oh, it, it, it's easy to point out what needs to be done in life and not do it, right? You know, like that's some kind of a gift to see what's not working, you know, but it's not. You know, you know people say, oh, well, someone should clean up our neighborhood. Yes, someone should. I think that's an excellent idea. You know, or they say, oh, someone should help that old person. That's an excellent idea. How about you? How about you? Oh, no, not me. Not me. You know, life is not talking about it. It's doing it, right? And if something comes into our awareness again and again and again, it's very likely that the reason God keeps giving that idea to us is because we're supposed to be the one to roll up our sleeves and get involved. See, we're moving from the talking school more into that walking school. You know, you've all heard this phrase, namaste. So namaste comes from the ancient Sanskrit language, and, and it means uh, the God in me recognizes and honors the God in you. So in India, um, or if you go to yoga anywhere around Los Angeles, you'll see people namasteing each other. It's quite a beautiful greeting say, to say, you know, the God in me recognizes and honors the God in you. But to those who just want to give us the idea with no participation, that's not a namaste. That's a namas go. That's what that is, right? 
you know, those who want to tell us how to live when it's not working so well in their life, but they're claiming to be the expert and they know how we should be do it, doing it, that is also a namasko. Right? So what, what can we believe totally? I mean, what can we really, really get on board with, right? What can we accept totally, fully, and completely right now? So Shakespeare, one of my favorites, said, all things be ready if the mind be so. So if your mind is in the right place, he's saying that the universe and everything on the outer plane is also in the right place, but not until your mind is in the right place first. Because the presence and power is in, through, and around all of us, each and every one. But if only I could contact it, right? That's what we say, if only I could contact it. Well, we can, and we do. We say, well, how? How, how is that possible? Through our thoughts through our feelings, because thoughts and feelings create our destiny, right? Thoughts and feelings create our experience, they create our conditions, they create the circumstances of our life. You know, we can't be outside that which, that which is everywhere present, right? And so God, we say, is everywhere equally present. You say, well, maybe if it's right for me, uh, you know, maybe if it's God's will, if God wants, who decided that? You know, that is a lack of understanding of the law of mind, you know, and the way of infinite spirit. There is no if when we pray, right? That implies doubt. It implies a lack of clarity. It implies confusion, uncertainty. As within, so without. So we have to be certain on the inside when we pray so that there can be certainty on the outside. We all have confusion and chaos in our world. I understand that. But there is no will outside of our own. It's not like God says, well, you know, it's just not my will that you be happy. It's just not my will that you have love. It's just not my will that you succeed. That is, that's a made-up concept. You know, God knows only to give of itself fully to all of us equally and alike. Right? So do we think that we're, you know, I don't have this. I, all right, so bear with me now because I'm going to use a sports thing, okay? So do we think that, you know, that there's a football game being played somewhere and God has to get all involved to make one team win over the other? You know, I mean, think about that. Is that really God? You know, I mean, that's a pretty small God. Those teams have trained. They are skilled. They have strategy. They have team spirit. They have coordinated uniforms. You know, I mean, they have the whole thing. <laughs> They're winning has nothing to do with the prayers of supplication and begging God, you know, to do something. You know, those prayers, th those, those begging prayers for my team to win are often being prayed by people who, should not have, who could not afford, probably, probably, that's my judgment, place to bet that they could not afford to lose, right? And so, so that's just crazy. And that's, and that's the same approach people take to God in their everyday life, just like they do for a, a particular sporting event, you know, oh, please. Now, now, I would say over here, if you are playing in the event, if you are playing on a team, yes, absolutely, you should pray. You should pray to do your absolute best, to be your most skillful, to be energetic, to be present, to be aware, to do the right thing when you're out there on the field, all of that. But for us to pray to some deity outside of ourselves to make one team win over another, that's just kind of snarky, isn't it? It's just kind of... It's not a very high vibration, I think. The work to be done, I think, is to call out from our own subjective depths the inspiration, the illumination, the intuition, the strength, the wisdom that we require. Now, we believe in science of mind. It's all there. It already exists within us. We just have to call it forth into expression. And this enables us to, 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 to so do the so-called impossible, to be victorious in the game. In other words, I have everything I need within me right now. Or maybe a way to say it as an affirmation is God has placed everything I need within me. God has placed everything I need within me. Yeah, that fits. So say that with me now. God has placed everything I need within me. That's an empowering thought. Not like going through the universe like, oh, I lack, I lack, I lack, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. Knock it off. Knock it off. That is not true. That is not the way God created you. God created you with absolutely everything you need within you right now. And a changed attitude changes everything in life. How many of us know that? It really does. Right? So the first place to look is, does my attitude stink? You know? This is what they're talking about in the Bible when Jesus goes to see Lazarus, and he's been in the tomb for days, and they say, my Lord, he stinketh. 
right? I think that also applies to our attitude. Sometimes our attitude stinks, and when our attitude stinks, it's very hard for the universe to do anything good by means of us. Right? So we must know and tune into the infinite and remind ourselves of and experience all of the good that God has already placed here before us. Think about that word, omnipresent, that God is omnipresent. God is everywhere, including in you and in me right now. And that omnipresent God is also omnipotent, which means all-powerful. Wow, that's thrilling. There is God in me, and it is capable of great, great things. See, I know what happens. There's that voice of God, but then there's the other voice. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine like a little angel on one shoulder and a little devil on the other, like in the cartoons when we were kids. Right? And so that negative, small, limited, petty voice comes to our mind, you know, and it's like, they're like spies from the other team, you know, and they want to know what our playbook is, right? They come in and, uh, in the form of well-meaning friends who don't want to see us get disappointed, or, well, I just don't want to see you get hurt, you know, and, well, I just know that that's a waste, what you're doing, and you're going to wind up very, very disappointed and sad, you know. Remember the last time you tried something and it didn't work out, you know, and it's like, mmm, thanks for that pep talk, yeah, right? And, we, and, and because we think they're part of our, our, our circle, we think, oh, we tell them our secrets. We tell them, you know, well, you know, I, I believe, you know, and I've heard in church that with God, all things are possible, and they're, Oh, no, no, no. They come back with a strategy that says, well, you know, it'll just never work. It's not possible. You don't have the power. You're not that great. Who do you think you are? On and on and on. It might work for other people, but why would it work for you? See, I think we have to keep our own consciousness high. To be victorious takes diligent effort. It really does. We must do the work even when we don't feel like it because that's really the test of do I have a spiritual practice? Do I do the work when I don't feel like doing it? Because that, I think, is probably the most important time. You know, the time you don't want to pray is the time you got to pray the most. The time you don't feel like doing your reading is the time you have to read the most. It's taken me years to figure that out, but now I know when that little voice, let's see, on this shoulder, says, ah, don't do the reading today, I think, oh, thank you for sharing. I'm going to read a little extra, you know, because I know my resistance is up. So the other night, I could not seem to fall asleep. No, I mean, I was ready for sleep. I wanted to sleep. And you know when you just can't? It's just like I just lay there affirming because that's what I do, you know? So I start with my spiritual affirmations. Then it's like it evolves into I am now very sleepy. I'm very sleepy. I love sleep. Sleep is good for me. And, um, and it seemed like the more I did that, the more awake I became. Uh, and so finally, filled with this surge of energy, I thought, I'm just going to get up. So I got up, and I did my affirmations, and then I prayed, and then I listened to uh, a couple of tracks on a CD that I like, and then I did a little writing, and then I peeled two pounds of carrots. <laughs> it's true. And then I polished the top of a table, and then I felt like, ah, I could just feel the shift. Then. I was ready to go to sleep. I went to bed and I fell asleep immediately, right? So as, as mental and spiritual scientists, we know the, the error conditions, uh, uh, that an erroneous condition must fail because it has no power, no law to sustain it, right? So if I look at something and say, this is not the truth that God created, therefore it has no power over me. All that sustains it is false belief and opinions. Probably lots of agreement about false beliefs and opinions. So we have to sustain a higher truth in our own consciousness. And what that sounds like to me is God in me is greater than this. God in me, the spirit of God within me is greater than this experience in the world. Because there's no power but God we teach in the science of mind. And what is God but the spirit that is within us? We're told, have no other gods before me. Now, our thoughts are creative, and what we believe and feel, so it's both of those things, I think, what we believe and what we feel ardently, we can attract. What we um, repeatedly, <laughs> uh, with feeling, imagine, we become. So 
what we impress on our subconscious mind. It's not just our conscious mind. Ernest says we have a demonstration when our conscious mind and our subjective mind are in agreement with each other. That's what we become. So you know, there's no end to the power and intelligence that's within each and every one of us. The only creative power is our thought. That's what we teach. Thought creates. So mind is what is creative, the mind of God that is uniquely individualized in you and in me. So if there were a devil, don't you think God would be sick of him by now? I mean, come on, right? God has no opposite. There are not two powers. It's only one infinite presence and power that responds to us, how? Through us. You know, are, are there challenges, difficulties, problems, things to overcome? You betcha, absolutely. And we will overcome them, you know? We will overcome them uh, with, uh, but we will not be overcoming them because of fear. We will not overcome them because of a particular dogma or ignorance or superstition. No way. I pe hear people talk about glorifying God. And I really thought about that, and I think, what does that mean to us in terms of science of mind, as a student of the science of mind, to glorify God. How do we do that? I think with victorious living. Your life working well glorifies God. You being the best person you can be glorifies God. You being happy, you being, regardless of external circumstances, because you know there is always a greater good unfolding, that glorifies God. Being grateful glorifies God. Forgiving glorifies God. You being your best self glorifies God. Now, how many of you have ever ridden a horse? I have ridden a horse only a few times. They're, they're very big. Um, uh, <laughs> so I've done it, I've done it a handful of times. Um, and I, re I remember uh, some years back, there used to be a, a, a ranch behind the Hollywood Hills sign, and you could take a horse ride. You'd bring a group, and you'd do a horse ride from the, that ranch to a Mexican restaurant in Burbank. And you'd have Mexican food, and by the time you come out, how many of you ever done that? It was a lot of fun. Um, uh, and by the time you come out, though, it's late, it's dark, the horses want to get home. So if, if you were an, ex, an inexperienced rider, uh, you just have to hold on tight. Because the horses, no matter what you do, the horses are in a hurry. They know they're going home, and they're going to bed. Um, so why did I bring that up? Um, oh. <laughs> So I've been on a horse a few times, and the one thing you cannot do is let the horse know that you are afraid, right? Because then, then there's no, nothing good can come from that. You must show no fear, right? You have to be the one, essentially, who is in control. And, and if you fall off, you get right back on, right? Just as in life, you know? If you fall off track, you just got to get right back on. So for us in Science of Mind, you know, we love God within us, by giving God our attention, our devotion, our loyalty, um, by recognizing that that is the power in our lives. As we practice this, I believe we overcome. We reveal a greater spiritual truth and experience victory. So the formula includes putting God first, then realizing it is the only power in presence, right? It's, it's a healthy respect for the divinity that created us, for which, uh, of which we are forever a part. So I think we have to refuse to give power to anything external, to anything created, or to any person, place, or condition, or circumstance. Because the mental scientist, which is what we practice here, does not give power to the world of effects. We radiate love and goodwill to all people. We give our attention to, to love and honesty and good, right, and to loving God. See, when we fill our minds with the eternal verities, the qualities of God, love, peace, joy, abundance, wholeness, right, it's, it, all of the fears and negativities start to dissipate because your mind can only hold one thought at a time. So what are we going to fill our mind with? We're going to fill our mind with life is good or, oh my God, it's just getting worse every day. Are we going to fill our mind with I am one with God and I can create whatever I set my mind to or my best years are behind me? See, when we fill our mind with these eternal verities, it seems to me that what's possible to us really, really opens up, you know, in extraordinary ways. So I think what's, what we have to do is we have to catch ourselves if we're thinking thoughts of, well, any of those lower level things like, you know, jealousy or revenge or hatred and replace them with spiritual truth. And I know people say, but I don't feel that. I don't feel that. I really am jealous. I really do want revenge. Well, then this is where you get to act as if a little bit. This is where 
you know, and remember, in Science of Mind, we don't play let's pretend, we play let's create. So by saying, okay, well, I'm, I, I want revenge, but I know that's not in my highest good. So if I didn't want revenge, how would I be? Well, I would be sending that person love. I don't want to send them love. Well, do it anyway. <laughs> do it anyway, because no good is going to come to you or the world in which we live if you don't, right? You're only, you're only messing up your own existence, because our dominant emotions and our dominant feelings are really what control us. You know, the negativities that we put our attention on, they drain us of our life energy. They drain us of enthusiasm. They drain us of inspiration. So you might say to yourself, all right, I forgive myself and everyone I have stuff on, wishing them all of the blessings of life, however you might articulate that, right? Or as Emma Curtis Hopkins says it so, art so beautifully, she just says, I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive everyone and everything. And you know, that's one of those things you could do 70 times in a row. Right? Just till you become so inundated with it that as soon as you think of somebody that you, that you have a little issue with, say, oh no, I already forgave everyone and everything. I don't have any energy on that anymore. You know, saying no to those things that would make me less than my best or not in alignment with my highest expression of spirit is what we're after. Right? And saying, saying yes to what will support us in growing and improving our life and our relationship with God, that's also what we're after. I think we have to be committed and honor our own personal integrity. You know, forget about shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in consciousness. I'm telling you, if there were, I would have found them by now. Because I have looked and looked and looked, and there are no shortcuts. Right? So I think for us, if we have the awareness, what we do is we let go of whatever um, detracts from the life that we say we want, it, whether it's an unhealthy habit or an unhealthy ab attitude. You know, whatever that may be for you, because those things are working against us. And have confidence in the God power that is within you, and honor and respect that there is divinity in other people. Like we started with namaste. The God in me recognizes and honors the God in you. When we get feedback and we don't like it, consider it an opportunity. And just sort of in the moment say, well, if there were something in that of value to me, what would I do differently? And I think that's important because our growing, I think as long as we're here, it never, ever stops. We keep on keeping on in the midst of the seeming obstacles. Remember, our spiritual connection and truth, you know, and don't be late for your daily spiritual practice. Remember way back when, if you miss practice, you don't get to play in the game. And that's true in life always, always. You know, what a football or a baseball team can teach us is that you win a game one play at a time. It's just one thing at a time, one little step, one little loving act, one loving thought, one loving prayer, one loving affirmation. You know, a number of years back, uh, there was an Olympic, uh, a United States Olympic speed skater by the name of Dan Jensen. This, I'm, I'm going back here. Uh, and, uh, and he got this letter from Mark Arrowwood, and it said, I watched you on TV. I'm sorry you fell two times. I am in Special Olympics. I won a gold medal at State Summer Olympics right after my dad died seven years ago. He said, before we start the games, we have a saying that goes like this. Let me win. But if I can't win, let me be brave in the attempt. And he goes on, he says, I want to share one of my gold medals with you because I don't like to see you not get one. I think, wow. In any rights, try again in four more years. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that incredible? Oh, my God. I just, I just, that just slays me. So I think, all right, that's, that's victory. That is really, really victory. So what we could ask ourselves, how we could move forward, say, if I were victorious, how would I feel? Victorious at what? If I had... Uh, a loving relationship like I desire, if I had a job that was fulfilling to me, if my health was what I think it could be, how would that feel? Now, really, how would that feel to you? That's important, right? What would my, now ask yourself, what would my consciousness need to be to be that person who could step into that? How would I have to feel about myself? How would I have to speak to myself on a daily basis? How would I you know, 
think about myself. As victorious, how would I encourage other people along the way? And when you've answered those things, the next step is to be all of that right now. Let's pray. So we, thanks. So we turn our attention inward for a moment to recognize that right here where we are, we are surrounded by the love of infinite intelligent spirit. That God that's everywhere is right here, surrounding us, filling us, expressing by means of us. That God within us is the most true, real thing about us. That we are emanations of the most high God. And I further know that we are all connected on the unseen side of life. In the mind and heart of God, there's only one of us here. And so I speak the word for each and every one of us, knowing that we are victorious over that which is before us this day. So if there's something that needs to be released or let go or changed within us, I speak the word that that is done now easily, joyfully, and effortlessly for each and every one. And if there is, in fact, a greater truth to be embraced by us, a greater truth that is the foundation for our growth and our healing and our expansion, I claim that that is also true for each and every one of us today that that spirit of God within us, the living spirit, knows no limitation. And we open to that right here, right now. We include in our prayer our family members and friends and loved ones. We know that right where they are, God is, in its fullness, meeting every need, answering every question, fulfilling all that needs to be fulfilled. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live touching all situations, all people everywhere, where there is the appearance of discord, we claim the perfect activity of God. Where there appears to be a lack of love, we claim the fulfilling love of God. Where there seems to be a lack of supply, we claim the abundance of God is right there. We bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. We bless leaders all over the entire globe, knowing that the mind and heart of God fills and guides and directs them for everyone's highest and greatest good. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is raising up for all of us. And with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>